Hello YouTube, it's Das Grigger, and today we are going to be looking at Gentoo Linux x86 quick install guide. This is going to be pretty much a let's just get in there and do it and I'm not going to worry about trying to explain it type video. I have done and hopefully uploaded the handbook video which takes about five different videos each about a half an hour and that goes through pretty much everything within the handbook getting you to the point where you have a bootable system but today I wanted to just go ahead and do this quick install guide too so if you don't want to sit there for two and a half hours of video you'll have this to go on so without further ado all I have done is I've grabbed the media that we need from Gen 2. We are using the boot minimal CD. I have a virtual box set up here so that we can record in it and you can see everything that's going on. I booted into it so that we can kind of save some time. If you don't know how to go ahead and get that media, look at video one, part one of the handbook and you can go from there and then you can bounce back over to here. So right now we are in the live CD and we're going to follow most of these instructions over here utilizing the Gen 2 Linux x86 quick install guide. So moving along here, you know, this first top here just kind of gives you it's some it's some tools you can run to see how fast your system's getting so that you get an idea of how long it might take. Now yesterday going through the handbook, it took me roughly 10 hours to get everything done. I think we can do it a lot faster today, especially if I'm not talking too much about other things. So we've downloaded the CD from the mirror. We've already booted to the CD. We don't have to worry about any of this. We're gonna check out this. Now the one thing, you know, you can do, for instance, an LSPCI here. This is gonna tell you what your hardware is. If I get that out of the way. Um, it's always a pain the way that the mouse takes over. But anyway, um, you've got your your list of hardware that's here that what we're seeing. But we're going to do the, the quick and easy way to install so we don't really have to worry too much about that. The big thing is making sure that we have an Ethernet adapter with an IP address. Now one thing you're going to notice is you're not seeing ETH0 or WLAN0. It's an upgrade in UDEV that I personally don't like at all. It changes it to this ENP0S3 uh, right here and I'm going to be talking about after we're all said and done showing you with some instructions that I found with the UDEV to change it back so it's something that you're more familiar with which I personally prefer it's up to you you know it's just a weird naming convention and I've grown used to WLAN 0 and ETH 0 but we see this there we see that we've got an internet connection if we do a ping to say Google we can ping it so we know we have internet. So we really don't have to need to, to worry about that. We can bypass, of course, the net up, network setup because that's working. Otherwise, you may need to go through some of this. Most likely, though, in 99% of your cases, you're not going to have a problem. Just remember, if you do use a device module that requires firmware, you may need to copy the firmware files that it needs inside of the lib firmware directory and a way that you can find out if you if you need firmware is if you go D message and you notice here it's using the E1000 right here it's using the E1000 Ethernet adapter and it looks like it all connected it had it not done that it would have said looking for firmware such and such 
and then it would have said couldn't find it that'll give you the the name of the firmware you can grab it from another Linux distribution and copy it into the slash lib slash um, firmware directory and then you should be able to remove the module and reload the module to get your wireless card working or your ethernet card working if it requires that firmware another thing that it says here is you have an optional ability to connect to Shakur Shell if you want to do that you want to make sure you change your password here and it's always a good thing to change it anyway just in case you need root access outside of where you're located and if you want the secure shell to run you run etc slash init dot d slash secure shell daemon and start that brings that up so now for instance I could go anywhere else and if I can access this computer I could go secure shell into it and run it alright we're moving right along here preparing the disks now you'll notice that if we do an fdisk dash l that we have one hard drive it's 21 and a half gigs there's no there are no partitions on there so we do an fdisk slash dev slash sda brings up our fdisk program M of course shows you the mem the menu. We want to create a new partition, a primary partition. We're going to do simple partitioning, and this is one of those things that you have to determine whether or not you want to have a swap partition and a root partition, a swap partition, a boot and a root, a swap partition, a boot, root, and home partition. There are many different styles you can go. We're going to go simple because I like simple. So this first one is going to be a swap partition that we're going to create. So it's going to be a 2 gig swap. So we go 2 gig. And we're going to create another partition. It's going to be another primary partition. It's going to be a 2. It's going to be the rest of the hard drive. Now, if we print the partition table, we see that we have SDA1 and SDA2. One more thing before we write this to the, to the um, list here and that is we need to change the partitioning type for SDA1 for a swap L will list all your partition types you type T you tell it you want to do partition 1 and by the partition type we see that to change it we need 82 now if we do a partition table we see that that first partition is a swap partition the second one is a regular partition we can now hit W to write it and now if we do fdisk dash l oh I have to spell right first we see that we now have SDA1 and SDA2 now to prepare them and we're gonna go ahead and make the uh, swap partition so we do mk swap slash dev slash SDA1 and we do swap on slash dev slash SDA1 and now we need to create and format the second partition that'll be our root to do that we do um, mkfs dot we're going to use ET, ext4 slash dev slash SDA2 Now we have two partitions created, they're formatted, and we can move on. Next thing we need to do, we need to mount the media. So we do a mount slash dev slash sda2 slash mount slash gen2. We then need to make the directory slash mount slash gen2 slash boot and if you had created a partition directly for the boot partition lot you need to mount it now into mount gen2 boot we did not do that so we don't need to worry about that and now we want to change directories into 
the mount gen2 directory. We need to make sure our date and time is proper. So we type in date. We've got Friday, December 20th. It does have UTC. Let's go ahead and change that though that to what it currently is. So the option is date, month, day, time, that's hours and minutes, and then year, 2013. It still says UTC, but that's okay for right now. Now we need to go ahead and, and get the stage three tarball. So what we do is we do link HTTP, and that's links, not link, colon slash slash www.gen2.org slash main slash en slash mirrors dot xml if all was proper we is, we are there and we need to go to the downloads area so go into downloads we are doing of course an AMD 64 so we're just going to go ahead and go to that area there and we need to download the stage 3 tarball alright while that downloads that'll take about a minute and 32 seconds I'm gonna go ahead and pause it so we don't have to wait on that to keep this video shorter okay that only took about a minute and 32 seconds as I thought and so we can go ahead and get out of this by hitting escape brings up that file menu exit out we do an LS we see we have the stage 3 tarball and now that we have the stage 3 tarball we can go ahead and extract it so with we'll time tar XP XJP I'm sorry JP I like to throw in a V for verbose and we'll get that going it'll probably take longer to extract it than it did to to um, download it so I'll pause it again here and that took about a minute and 23 seconds to go ahead and extract now so we're moving right along so let's get on down into the CH rooting into the file system that that means is that we're gonna make that mount gen2 directory our root directory to complete the rest of our tasks so to do that tells us to go back to the root of our live CD we do a mount dash T proc proc slash mount slash gen2 slash proc mount dash dash r bind slash dev slash mount gen2 slash dev mount dash dash r bind slash sys slash mount slash gen2 slash sys we need to make sure that we copy the resolve file from our live CD so resolve and copy that to slash mount gen2 etc and now we receive root into that slash mount gen2 using the born again shell or bash and we need to set up the profile that's within there so it knows its main configurations now that we've done that you know this is something if you watch my other video we did that port the emerge web R sync and it did not work it um, gave us errors so I did the em the emerge dash dash sync 
and that's because in the handbook it's missing this instruction right here that says to make the directory user portage and that's the error we got when we first did that oh by the way if you do an ls now you should see that it looks like this and there's our stage three tarball and we're at the root that just kind of reinforces the fact that we are actually in the mount gen 2 partition and not the live cd anymore so now that we've made the user portage we need to go ahead and import portage so we do an emerge dash web r sync and i'm gonna throw a time in there because i'm interested in knowing how long that takes to complete and we get an error interesting I'm gonna pause real quick it's interesting that yesterday I did not run into this problem but today I am running into it I did find this article over here so we're going to try this out the problem is that it keeps telling us that there's something missing of course there's something missing it's an empty portage tree so what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the portage tree that we did create because it's an empty one anyway so slash user portage we're going to make the directory with a dash p option slash user portage profiles and we're gonna echo gen2 pipe it slash user portage profiles repos underscore name and now we're gonna try the emerge rsync again which is really strange that this is happening because I've not seen this problem like this before and it's still having problems Minor, minor problema there. All right, go back up here. That should have been a repo name. Now let's try. Hey, there we go. Okay, minor bug, and it says so right here in this little Gen Two wiki. And that's the good thing, you know, I'm, in a way it's kind of good that we read into it. It's kind of funny that yesterday I did not have that problem. And when we were doing the handbook review and setting everything up. But it's now going ahead and grabbing our portage snapshots. Things should be okay. So let's get back into our quick install. That kind of threw another five minutes into the video about problems that we ran into. But you know, that's what these sort of videos are all about if everybody never ran into an issue it would be great and easy but have you ever gone through a tutorial or a package and trying to learn how to do it and something doesn't work and you're going I'm not sure what to do next because that's why I'm going through this tutorial and since everything was working and the tutorial they don't ever explain what you should do if you run into this problem. Well, this is the first time I've run into that kind of a problem. And it's good now to know what you should do. And we need to create that that folder and create the repo name for Gen2, which I think is kind of buggy. And like I said, 
yesterday I didn't run into that problem, and today I did. So I'm and I'm doing the exact same thing that I did yesterday. So I'm not sure. That's kind of strange that that occurred. I wonder if something didn't get laid down proper. Yeah, I I don't think that's it. I'm not sure. I mean, we're talking about an empty folder that doesn't exist. We'll go ahead and let this thing finish sinking the tree here. And for time's sake, I'll go ahead and pause the recording for now. All right, that only took about two and a half minutes to complete. Then the next thing in our list is to set up our time zone information. So if you do an ls slash user share zone info, you can see or find your country or first your continent and then go from there I know for instance mine is America and Phoenix so what we will do is copy slash user share zone info America Phoenix we're going to copy that over to ETC local time and then we're going to echo America slash Phoenix and send it to ETC time zone And if we do date, it now states that it is Friday, December 20th. Yeah, that's not correct at all. <laughs> that's because we went from UTC to, to MST and it changed. So let's update our date. It is 1220 at 1021, 2013. There we go. Now our time and date is proper again. Now it says it wants us to go ahead and set our profile. So do e select profile list. See a list of profiles we can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and just set this as desktop, which is through three. So we're going to set three. And we're going to list again just to make sure that that now says that we are on profile option three for our desktop. And it does. So we move right on along. You know, set up a few files here so we go into the ETC directory. We want to echo 127.0.0.1. We're going to call this uh, DOS Gen 2. And we don't have a fully qualified name for it, so we're just going to call it DOS Gen 2 and localhost. Pipe that to the host file. Or send it to the host file, I should say. And then we're going to run this command sed or sed dash i dash e tick s slash host name dot star slash host name equals dos gen 2 or whatever you're calling your system in quotes slash tick space conf dot d slash host name and that should set up the host name file in the conf dot d with all that next we do a host name 
dos gen2. And if we do a host name dash f, we now see that dosgen2 is the host name of the system. And can you believe it? We're already at the kernel. Moving right along. So we're going to go ahead and time and emerge. And I'm just going to do a dash V. I'm not going to do the A to speed things along. Genju dash sources. The dash V just means that it's going to be verbose. Most of the time, I'll tell you that I like to go ahead and do AV for ask and verbose because I always like to know what it's going to install, but I pretty much have an idea what it's going to get at this point, and there's no reason to go ahead and ask for, for that um, request. So this may take a couple more minutes that we can shave off of our video, so I'm going to go ahead and pause it until it's finished installing the kernel sources. Alright, the kernel sources have been installed. It took three minutes to do that, so we move on. Now, to make this super simple, we're going to go ahead and emerge the gen kernel option instead of doing this by hand because we want this to just kind of go through and do everything for us to make it super simple. As I've said in the past, if you're new to Gen 2 and you're not comfortable with kernels and this is what you're afraid of, this is the easiest way to go ahead and get a Gen 2 system up and running without having to actually get into the kernel and do anything with it. By using the gen kernel option and building your system this way, it will create your init ramfs, it will create your kernel, and it will be built so that it will try to detect all your hardware and load the modules and everything it needs at boot time. It's a little bit slower than what you can get it. I mean, I've got my system right now to where I can pretty much turn it on and be at a boot prompt to log in within 10 seconds. But when you're first starting out, it's best to go ahead and just let this go through using the gen kernel until you're familiar and you want to jump in there. And also, once you've done this and you know your system works and everything is running, it's this is an easier way so that you can find out what you need to build into your kernel specifically. And most of the times, as I've said in previous kernel, videos, you're going to want to make sure that your processor is proper, your drivers are correct, and there's very little else. There's three spots, and the third one off the top of my head is, is eluding me, so we'll leave it at that. And you can always play with the kernel later and create multiple kernels for the same kernel version, and call them different things, and set up different grub entries for the same OS so you can test them out and see how you did and make sure things are still working proper and if it doesn't work you can always reboot and go back into what you're creating here which is your gen kernel option so while that compiles I'll go ahead and once again pause the video to try to shave off a couple seconds and we're back and it has installed so the next thing that we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and have it create everything, and I'm not going to use their gen kernel dash dash install command line. What we're going to do, though, is I'm going to use the time command so we can see how long it takes to compile the kernel, and we're going to say gen kernel, and we're going to do all. That's going to build everything and put it where it needs to be. Now, if you created your boot directory and didn't create a boot partition for it, you're going to get that warning error that says failed to mount boot. But that's okay because we created the directory mount gen2 boot and that should be fine. The rest of it will go through its thing. This on this computer with this virtualization will take about a half an hour. So it's now about 10:30, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, let this continue to compile, 
and hopefully in a half hour we'll have a kernel that's been built and we can move on. Our kernel has completed. It took about 27 minutes or 27 and a half minutes or so to to complete. But now we should have a working kernel installed and we can move on. If we want to check this, if we do a, a listing of the boot directory, we should see that there are three files now, the system file, the init ram s, and the kernel. So we are good to go with that. Now we just have a few more things that we need to configure. We need to get into, or we're already into the ECC directory. So we need to edit the FS tab. And I like to get rid of a lot of these unneeded comments. So just pull that all out. And we don't need to worry about the boot because we didn't do that. We do need to worry about our root, however. And so what we'll do is we'll change root to SDA2. And we partition that to be EDXT4. So we need to change that. Our swap partition, we need to make sure we change that to SDA1. And in our CD-ROM, I like to change that to SR0 because that's what the device normally is. And I get rid of the floppy because we have no floppies. And that's all that really needs done in that section. We'll go ahead and get rid of that comment as well. That makes it easy. So we save that and get out of it. And let's move on down our list. Oh. The next thing is the network. And we're not going to worry about that for now. We're going to skip that till after we've rebooted to set up the network. And the reasoning I'll explain has to do with these new UDEV rules that I don't like. And I'm going to show you what you can do. And I think that when I did my handbook video, I think that might have been one of my mess ups that when I rebooted I didn't have network connectivity and I think it's because I needed to create these links and and do this afterwards instead of while we were ch rooted in. So let's 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 let's, let's just ignore the networking for now. We need to and this is another thing I made a mistake in there is we need to go ahead and reset the root password again because when I reset the root password in the handbook I did it at the beginning when we were in the live CD but I didn't do it again when we were CH rooted then when we first booted into our system I couldn't log in because I hadn't set the root password yeah rookie mistake eh? Well, now we have the root password set up we can go in we can edit our clock so we nano dash w slash etc conf dot d hardware clock. What we're going to be setting this is to local or if you do UTC you don't have to do anything at all but we're going to set that to local. Save that. thought I was going to save that. Alright that's now saved. We need to edit the rc.conf. Now the only thing I really do in here is I set it up so I can have an interactive and I also like to set up so that I can do the logs. So if anything goes wrong, I can check out where the log is. So you want to uncomment the RC logger to yes and uncomment RC log path. And I'll leave it to var log rc.log. And I think that's pretty much everything we have to do in here. Nothing really else. You can go through and you can read it. They have great comments explaining what it all does. Those are the only three that I'm going to do for now. And then the last thing, we look at key maps. I'm not sure if there's anything in there. There might be for your country, but uh, we'll just take a quick look. Yeah, it's set up for right now, US for the key map. Window keys is set for yes because we do have a Windows. And if you're in Europe, you may need to fix the Euro and do a few extra things. But for me, there is nothing we need to do for key maps. The last couple of things we want to do is install the syslog in the Vixicron. 
those are log logging tools and um, system um, organizers so that you can set tasks and things so we're going to go ahead and emerge those syslog dash ng and vixicron those are going to take a little bit of time to install I'm going to say yes and we will go ahead and pause so that you don't have to sit there and watch the compilations four and a half minutes and we have those installed so the next thing we want to do here is go ahead and add them to start up at boot so we do an RC update add syslog-ng default and rc-update add vixicron now it's interesting because I think in the handbook they have you installing crony or cron ie or however they want you to say it but in this version they still have you installing the old vixicron which is what I'm used to the next step inside these quick installs is if you use any other file systems you may need to go ahead and merge them such as XFS, JFS, RiserFS we will need to go ahead and probably install DHCP so let's get that one going that won't take too long time emerge AV DHCP CD get that we don't have to worry about PPP we move on. The last step we need to do is grub. Now I want to make sure that I install grub legacy and inside of the handbook it does talk a little bit more about doing the grub legacy so I'm going to bounce back to that as reference real quick. Because I want to do grub zero. So what we do here is emerge grub. Let's do a time entry to get an idea of a timestamp on that. Now you know these time things are different based upon your RAM, speed, etc. Number of CPUs. You know, in this virtual box, I'm using six CPUs, three gigs of RAM. It's running off of my Core i7 processor, so it should have a lot of a lot of power. It installs that, and let's see what it says for for setting it up. should be good afterwards after we get this uh, installed here I'll kind of show you a quick way to make things a little bit easier when setting up grub of course this is for legacy grub and not grub 2 a lot of you know what my opinions are of grub 2 I just really prefer how simple the configuration configuration files look for grub legacy so let's pause this video for just a little bit while Grub installs. I'm not sure how long that'll take, but probably only a minute or two. All right, so Grub is now installed. So we want to go into the boot folder. And what I like to do is create links to shorten these names. So we do a symbolic link for the init RAMFS, and I call it init RD. And, do a, and I do a symbolic link with an ln-s kernel and we'll just yeah we'll just call it kernel for now if we do another log of system 
we'll see that those are created. If we do an LSA option, we'll see where they're pointing to. And now we want to go into Grub, and we want to edit the Grub comp file. Default zero. Since, since this is, we have one, we're just going to put, say, a three second timeout on it. On the boot splash, you'll want to make sure you uncomment it. Now, because we put the root on SDA2, we need to change this. HD0 means the very first hard drive, and then 0 means the very first partition, but our very first partition is our swap partition. And I messed that up also in the handbook. That should be HDA0 slash 1. You need to make you need to think about that when setting up your splash image. And then we can uncomment this, and this is actually Gen2 Linux 3.10.17. I can hit the 7. We need to uncomment the rest of these. And we need to change root here to be 0, 0,1. And then in the example here, they have boot kernel kernel, so we're going to get rid of all this extra stuff. See, by creating that link, you don't have to type in all this stuff and know what it says. And then we need to change the root here to SDA2. We don't, according to this, we don't need this part here, so we're going to just go ahead and get rid of that. But up here in my notes, if we want to set the network so that it says the proper name that we're used to, we need to add this to this part here. So we're going to type in get back into here and type in um, net dot if names equals zero. And then for the init ramfs issue we can get rid of all of this and just call it init rd. And we don't need this last option here so we get rid of it and we really don't need the comments up there so there is our simple grub configuration for right now we'll go ahead and save it now we have to actually configure grub to boot so we type in grub we type in the root And then remember, our root is HD 0, 1 for the first hard drive and the second partition on that. Remember, computers always start with, whenever they're numbering things, they always start with 0 for the first option. It sees our partition, which is a good sign. And now we want to set up HD 0. sees everything proper and now we should be able to quit and we should be good grub is all done so we now can reboot and hopefully go into our new file system so we exit out of our ch root you want to do this the one time you want to u-mount all of your mounted partitions It kind of shows it in here a nice way to do it. When you get to this point here, you don't really have to do the whole thing because we don't have boot, but we do have uh, proc and sys to worry about. So, slash proc, comma, slash sys. And now we should be able to reboot. And cross our fingers.
we'll hope that it all works. Now remember, we still have to set up the network after all this goes through. Oh, and you know, I think I forgot to turn off the device. Yeah, we still have that set up. Yeah. As soon as this finishes, it won't take a moment here. We're just going to tell it for right now, halt. Alright. Go into here, go into the settings real quick. I'm just going to disable in our storage area. That right there. So that it will boot to the hard drive. Cross our fingers, okay, our grub menu popped up proper. Let's see if we can extend this out just a little bit. And tell the view to scale it. And bring it back over here. doesn't look as clean but you can always set your VGA settings proper but so far everything is looking proper log into root and we are now in our new system but we need to make sure we set up our network still so we do an if config and because we put that net dot if names equals zero in our grub configuration it now has eth zero set up instead of the enp so what we need to do is go into etc and net dot d and we need to create a symbolic link for net dot low to net dot eth zero and now if we start that we should get an IP address and if we do another if config we see we have an IP address and we want to make sure now that we know that it all works within here we can add net.eth0 to the default startup we reboot we should be good to go on that and that finalizes the network settings that we needed to do the last couple things that you might want to go ahead and do now of course is to create a local user ID we want to update the uh, world packages you know, right now for instance if we were to do an emerge dash AVU capital ND world we will see that there are a number of packages that probably need to be updated before we start doing anything else to the system. There's also the news either articles that you may want to read and a few other things that you may want to look at. That's the down and dirty though version of installing Gen2 using the quick install guide and that pretty much gets you everything that you need to know about getting into this. If you have any questions or concerns please let me know. If you think that this helped you out, let me know. And if you still are unsure of how things are working, go through the handbook and see what you might, well, you, you, you should find within the handbook a lot of the answers to all of your questions. There is, of course, my videos that I just did a couple, well, yesterday on that, and all that stuff will be uploaded hopefully as of. December 25th, 2013.
including this video here. So as you can see, there's about 225 packages that need to be updated. Of course, you need to work on some things like your make.conf file. There's a few other items that you may want to configure and customize. Uh, this took 50 minutes to get this far, and I think when I did it the other way, it took about two hours to get this far. So, saved about an hour and ten minutes. So thank you for watching. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. We'll talk to you all later. Have a great holiday season, and I say that because this was built during the holidays, and bye.